so, this little churchyard explains why we've brought a McLaren all this way. And yet, in many ways, the destination, well, it's not really as important as the journey to get here. Coming to Scotland is always a treat. The land of locks, lairds and munros is arguably my favourite place in all the world. I've wanted to do a long journey in McLaren's 570 GT for a while, stretch its legs, test those Grand Tour credentials. And for reasons that will become apparent, this seemed like the perfect adventure to take it on. This time I'm heading somewhere in Scotland that's new to me. We're not routing through Glasgow to the wild west coast, and we're not tracking through Edinburgh to Fife and the Cairngorms. Instead, we've bisected those two major cities. And we're now up on somewhere called the Campsie Fells. Campsie actually means Crooked Fairy Hill. And the road we're on, the B822, is known as the Crows Road. Although it feels wild and remote, it's also a relatively wide piece of tarmac, meaning it can be enjoyed by cars bigger than hot hatches. Part of the whole reason for this journey, I love exploring. People say, where should I go? Where should I go and drive? Get out a map, get on Google Maps, look on Street View, and just explore. It is the most brilliant feeling driving on a road you've never driven before and just seeing it open up in front of you like this. The views unfold and the road keeps throwing unexpected things at you. It's a proper adventure. The sheer scale of the scenery up here is breathtaking with the heavenly heather and the lonely moorland giving a real feeling of remoteness. It's always hard to convey that sense of scale on film, but hopefully this gives you a bit of an idea. From the Campsy Fells, it's onwards and northwards. Just in case you're not familiar with the 570 GT, it is part of McLaren's sports series, has 562 brake horsepower, and 443 pounds foot of torque. It can reach 60 miles an hour in just 3.4 seconds and go on to 204 miles an hour flat out. As you can tell by the name, it is intended to be the slightly more relaxed version of the 570S, and if you drive them back to back, you can notice a difference. But I think the reason most will buy it is just for the sleeker look of the rear on the GT. The sloping hatch atop the engine completes the 570's aesthetic perfectly. In fact, I think it's the best looking car in the current McLaren range. I even like this sort of bitter chocolate brown paint. As subtle as black or grey, but more interesting. One of the lovely things about doing these long journeys is you get to know a car a bit more, spend more time in them, and you just you notice little things like this tweeter here. I'm sure I've noticed it before, but the more I look at it, the more I'm fascinated by it. It looks like some sort of piece of kitchenware by Alessi or something. I also love the fact this 570 GT has got the panoramic roof in it. It doesn't feel quite as airy as perhaps the original Zonda did. That was like putting your head into one of those goldfish bowl space helmets that you saw in Moonraker. But this is it's pretty much as good as the 720S, to be honest. Anyway, as we plot a cross-country route northwards, we're homing in on Aberfoyle and a piece of road, the existence of which I've been aware of for some time, but which I've never actually visited. It's called the Duke's Pass. So we've gone from the Crows Road to the Duke's Pass to enter the naming spectrum. Built by the Duke of Montrose in the 19th century, it was originally intended just to provide better access to his estate, besting even Lord March's driveway, I'll warrant. However, it was then improved in order to cope with the booming Victorian tourist trade, as people flocked to the area after Walter Scott published his epic poem, The Lady of the Lake, which was based around Loch Katrine. This is nestled in the Trossachs. Trossachs is actually a small woodland. To me, it sounds like a sort of Scottish swear word. Stub your toe. Oh, Trossachs. Kerbal wheel. Ah, Trossachs. Somebody says in the pub, oh, McLaren's going to build an SUV. That's absolute Trossachs. Every time I come back here, I always think I would just love to live here. In fact, 
somewhere like that would do pretty well. The driveway needs a bit of work. Okay, we've got the nose lift. <sighs> Perfect. Low view. Might need a bit of paint. Look at all this. Not that many bedrooms, probably. But look at all the garaging you get. The escort there. The clown there. Nomad in there, at the far end. Some sort of tractor as well. Normally would need a bit of mowing. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I can see myself here. Move in right away. Just need a pay rise, that's all. So many of the drives on great roads are characterised by mountains, but the nature of the Duke's Pass is a bit different. If you're going to choose a word to describe this road, it would be flow. Unlike the big mountain passes, this road, because it goes round all these locks, it sort of it crests and dips and ducks and dives and has a very different feel to it. I absolutely adore it. The way you just link the corners together, there's not huge patches of acceleration and braking. You're just almost maintaining speed, a little lift to turn into the corner and drive through the other side. When you link them together, it's just the most wonderful feeling. And it means as well, you don't, you don't need a McLaren to enjoy this road by absolutely no means. It feels a little bit to me as though if you let the Nürburgring grow wild, let the grass grow, this is what it would end up like. On a lot of these trips, the road is the reason for the journey. But on this occasion, the Duke's Pass is a conduit rather than a conclusion. As the A821 meets the A84, we head north for a few miles on another brilliant piece of road before turning left to Balquida Glen. Why? Because this is McLaren country. Bruce may have hailed from Auckland, New Zealand, but he was of Scottish descent, and the seat of Clan McLaren is here. The name, which has accrued several different spellings over time, was taken from the Celtic abbot that built the first church on this site some 800 years ago. The clan has had to battle for the land over the years, first with the Buchanans and then the McGregors, including the infamous Rob Roy. His grave, along with those of Countess McLaren's, can be found scattered amongst the ruins of the old kirk. The clan crest is a lion's head, wreathed in laurels, just as Bruce was so many times after races. So this little churchyard explains why we've bought a McLaren all this way. So there we are, a McLaren to the seat of Clan McLaren, which explains the whole point of this journey, why we bought this car here. This end point was really where it all started in terms of planning. And yet, as is so often the case, the destination, well, in many ways, it's not as important as the journey to get here.